Hello guys, once again it's Matt and today we have another video. Let's thank our members Invictus, Crazy Blue Cox and our Patreons Interceptor, Richardson, Danny Cage and Rupert. Thank you guys for helping out. And let's get into it. So today we're going to talk a little bit about MiG-23s again, you know, the MiG-23 is one of my favorite aircraft in the game, if not my favorite aircraft, probably just lose for some of the MiG-21s to be honest, but still. And we're going to talk about some of the MiG-23s uh, that should come or could come. You know, I'm not uh, saying that it, it, we must have these aircraft, right? I'm just saying some of the variants that we might see in the game in the future. And some of the variants that I think should be added. Some of them are more um, likely to come. Some of them are less likely to come. But still... There are a couple of variants that will be very, very fun to see. So, uh, we're going to do a five kind of list, you know. So, five MiG-23s that should come or that I want to come to War Thunder. So, first of all, let's talk about early MiG-23s, right? We have... The first thing that we have is the MiG-23M, which is already um, kind of a, a mass-produced version, all right? Uh, we have kind of some very i mean we have like five prototypes variants before this and some of them are pre-production as well so they technically could be added they are production models even though they're pre-production they are production models and they were used by the soviet air force so they can be used they, one of them was actually used for like eight years in the air force so yeah it should be added right uh, for these, we have two options, to be honest. So it will be technically six aircraft, but still in a bonus on the, on the end. But technically, uh, just one of these first should be added. So we have two options for an earlier MiG-23 than the M. So, um, of course, as I said, we have the M in 11.0. So an early on the Tech 3 variant, uh, maybe even earlier than the MiG-21Bs or something like that, okay? So you have two options here, the MiG-23S and the MiG-23L. So the S is the first important production model. It was made 69 uh, of them, and uh, some sources may vary on that, but still, 69 uh, built. Um, actually, it was just a pre-production model. It was from 1970, uh, but the project itself ended in 1969. Uh, so yeah, due to the RP, a 23 radar being still in development at the time, it had uh, basically the same radars as the MiG-21. So it was kind of a side grade to the MiG-21S, SM and SMT. So we had the RP-22SM. Uh, it is the same radar as in the MiG-21. So it would be very interesting to see a MiG-23 with a, a, a MiG-21's radar, right? Uh, so yeah, it had data links and other avionics systems from the MiG-21 as well. So it was... A very early MiG-23, right? It had a very bad max G of around 5 Gs. And it could break it due, due to the early design wings that were still in development, you know. This was very early production. So, yeah. And uh, it could use the weaponry of it was obviously the, uh, the Ge Geisha? <laughs> Geisha 23 cannon with 200 rounds. And also the missiles, the R3S. The R3R and the R13M. So these would be the weaponry, okay? It had no flares, nothing like that. Also could carry some bombs and rockets. Use the R27F2 300, which is an earlier model of these type of engine, um, than the uh, R29 of the MiG-23M. So it has kind of similar to 20% less power than the MiG-23M's uh, engine. So it had around 100 kilonewtons. And it was built between 1969 in 1970, entered in service in 1970 in the VVS in some squadrons. Had around 175 meters per second of climb, and it should be around 10.0 BR or 10.3. As I said, it doesn't have flares, and it only uses really old missiles, and it doesn't even have an IRST, so it would be a very early variant. It would just have its performance, but less than the M overall, and the missiles would be very bad, and no flares, so yeah, it's a limited radar, a uh, limited aircraft, but it would be fun to have this first variant. This is the first important production model. We had some uh, 
like pr models between those that were built in the 30 mid uh, numbers or there was one in, in 18 so 18 numbers of them were built uh they were normally called the mig 23 without a designation so just mig 23 but it's more of a, a like a a prototype kind of thing or pre-production another pre-production model than an actual aircraft uh, so then in 1970 71 uh, they had just before the mig 23m we had the mig 23l which is the first mig 23 to use the rp 23 radar it is still a very early version of the radar so we had a detection range of around 50 kilometers and a look down mode of around 18 so it's very limited uh, but it could carry the R-23, which always helps, and the R-3S and R-13M, so no R-60s. Uh, had also around an 195 meters per second of climb with the new R-29 engine, the same one as in the MiG-23M. The Max-G was also increased to 7Gs, and around 102 were built, um, and they later even were retrofitted to use the Type 3 wing design, which is the wing design of the MiG-23M, making it turn 8Gs. So it is better than the S, but worse than the M. Should be a BR between 10.0 and 10.7, probably 10.3, but it still didn't have flare. So these two are these these two are the options that I give you guys even to choose uh, between the a MiG 20 an earlier MiG 23, right? So a MiG 23 S would be around 10.0 of BR or even 10.3 on the max side, and the MiG 23 L would be probably a 10.3 aircraft, but they don't have you know, uh, uh, players, as I said, so they will not be that good. Uh, I still think that the L is too similar to the M, so I think the S would be a very, very good model. Uh, it is a very, very early design from the 70s, so it would be very, very cool to see that in 10.0, for example. It would just have its performance. It would be similar to a, a MiG 23 BN of this, the Germans, but having air to air missiles. But the idea behind it is pretty similar. You would have even less power and it would be like more. Um, uh, it would be heavier because of the radar. So, yeah. Then the second of the list would be the MiG-23 MS. So this would be a premium or an event vehicle. Depends on the situation. Um, it can be both, right? A more, it is basically a more simplified version of the MiG-23 MF for less trusted export customers, you know. So it is the same aircraft as the MiG-23M, but with different avionics and sensors and stuff like that. Everything based on the MiG-21 again, but it is... Everything is a MiG-23, but the avionics, radar, sensors, stuff like that is a MiG-21. So it has the Almas-23 radar, which is a radar based on the RP-21. Uh, so it is still the same radar that we see in the MiG-21s of the time. Um, it had the same gun sight of the MiG-21s, so it doesn't have IRST. The air to air missiles would be the same as the S, so R3S, R3R, and R13M uh, was added later as well. Produced between 1973 and 1978, of course, it is an export model only. Even though the Soviet Union actually used it for service with training squadrons, but it, yes, it is uh, an export only model in general. Uh, it can easily be distinguished uh, it from the MiG-23M or MF by the shorter nose radome. Uh, so, yeah, pretty interesting, right? It should be around 10.0 or 10.3, probably 10.3, uh, but it still had, didn't have flares or anything like that. And it should be, as I said, an event vehicle or a premium vehicle. Um, a high-tier premium vehicle, maybe when we get tier 8 or something like that. Uh, we had many many skins that can be added to it so many countries actually use this aircraft so um, 54 of them were sent to syria 18 of them were sent to iraq eight of them to egypt and 54 to libya so it has many different skins that can be added this version i think it should be a premium or event because even though it was used by the soviet union uh, it is more of an export model anyway so the tech 3 one would be the s which is has even less power and stuff uh, for a 10.0 and then the ms for a 10.3 kind of situation uh, or even 10.0 still but as a premium or event vehicle then we have the third one um so yeah pretty this one is a pretty interesting one and it's an aircraft that probably 
won't be at it and I don't have even have faith on this aircraft anyway uh, to be at it because it's too similar to other ones but it's still pretty interesting so it is the MiG 23P it can be the BIS as well but the P would be more different than the others it is still based on the MiG 23M uh, but it has some differences so it is a PVO variant uh, I sh think it should be an event vehicle this should be an event vehicle uh, because it's too similar to the other ones that I'm going to talk about so yeah, event, um, interceptor variant for the PVO, which is the Soviet Air Defense Forces, didn't have IRST or Ultra ground. It was uh, able to use the R-24 and the R-60M at the start of its service life, and it had an improved radar over the M. It was even later uh, modified and retrofitted to use the MiG-23 MLA radar. So it is a very uh, kind of interceptor vibe of the aircraft, right? A very good interceptor with the belly flares, but uh, it should be an event vehicle for an 11.0, 11.3 aircraft. Uh, as I said, I don't think this is going to be added at all. Uh, the difference is not really there. The only main difference is that it doesn't have an RST or air to ground. Uh, everything else is basically very similar. It's a mix between an MLA and an M. So we would have still the same airframe as the M, but it has kind of a radar similar to the MLA right so a different aircraft uh, very interesting made for the pvo only so yeah pretty pretty different one uh, then the fourth one the mig 23 ml uh, this would be a tech 3 aircraft and the first to define the mig 23 as a model uh, of an aircraft you know so it is a model between the m and then mla so we had the m then the ml and then the mla so it is more like the mla than the m though you know it should substitute the MiG-23M in 11.0, uh, but with a minor change done to the M as well. They're going to talk about at the end of the video. That should be kind of the bonus of the video. So uh, we're going to do something to the MiG-23M to it be um, a lower BR. And then the ML, M ML uh, should be the 11.0 version of the MiG-23, right? Uh, so yeah, should have been added first instead of the MLD, to be honest. Uh, when the MLD was added, it was too OP, if you remember. So the ML should be added, uh, it should have been added uh, back in the day um, as the MLD, right? In instead of the MLD, we should have gotten the ML. It would be le way less less OP than it was uh, the MLD at first. It had an improved 8.5G limit and the R35 engine, same engine as the MLA and MLD. Uh, the airframe is itself is kind of 100% the same as the MLA. It could carry the R60M from the get-go, and it is a version from 1975, 1976, so it is basically three years later than the, the, the M variant. And it had an improved radar over the M, the RP23ML. It was completely different than the M, uh, so the, the weight was lowered and the wings were different. Everything is, the, is different. It's much like the MLA. Uh, the empennage was different, just like the MLA, so it is much more similar to the MLA, but a little bit before the MLA, uh, one year, one year and a half before the MLA was produced. Um, it was supposed to be using the R24, but the R24 took a little bit more time to be added uh, to its arsenal, and when it was added, it was called the MLA. So it, the MLA is actually just a modification of the ML, right? So yeah, the MLA could be in the German tech tree, and then the ML could be in the Soviet, and then the MLD as well. So it would use normally the R23s, could carry the R60M, it could carry both the belly flare pods and the over the wing pods as well if they want to, um, and the MLA, and a, of the MLA and the MLD, I mean the pods that we see in the over the wing, you know, and it should be where the M is is right now, so a 9.11.0 uh, aircraft. R23s, R60Ms, and yeah, just that. So it would be very, very cool. It would be a mix between the M and the MLD where we see it right now. And then the latest variant that we're going to talk about, the fifth aircraft, uh, the MiG-23-98. Uh, should be a Tech-3 vehicle or an event vehicle. Probably an event vehicle in the far, far future. When we have like Su-35s, maybe this thing can be added as an event vehicle. Because first of all, this is Basically, the latest variant of the MiG-23 to ever be produced, technically. It is based on the MLD. It was made in the 90s. 
and he had the Mosquito 23 Raider instead of the normal RP23 MLA2 of the MLD, uh, which from some sources it is a smaller version of the Raider of the MiG-29M, so it's a very, very good Raider. Around 100 kilometers of detection uh, for a fighter-sized target, twice as much as the first MiG-23s, so very, very good Raider. And he had the capacity to carry anything that the Russians had in the 90s, so the R-27s, R-27Es, uh, the R-77s, R-73s, KH-31s, Cap 500s, any, any type of guided stuff, he could, yeah, he could use it. Uh, basically anything. He had the HMS, so the helmet mounted uh, display, right? The HMD. Um, and the cockpit was a redesigned one with MFD screen, so it was a very, very good aircraft. Uh, but there is not much info about it in the sense of production. Apparently, only one model was made, uh, so it could be an event vehicle or a Tech 3 vehicle as well, but probably an event vehicle or a, even a premium one tier 8. Uh, the tier 8 uh, division is added, right? Uh, rank 8, not tier 8, um, in the game, you know? So when you get, we get like 4.5 uh, uh, generation aircraft or 4 plus generation aircraft, we should see this as an event vehicle or something like that. Technically, only one made, uh, at least this Dash 98 uh, Dash 1, right? We had another two other minor uh, uh, modifications, um, but I will just talk about the normal Dash 98, uh, which is the Dash 1, right? Which is the main one with the good Raider and R-77s and stuff. So, yeah, this I think it should be very, very cool to actually see in the game, but I think it's just too much right now, and even in the future, it is too much right now. And then the bonus one would be the MiG-23M actually being removed, the R60M being removed from the MiG-23M. So, even though I know the, MiG the MiG-23M actually used the R60M eventually in its life, I think it should be a lower BR, around 10.7, with just the normal R60s, and then we add the MiG-23 ML in the middle. It would be a much more closer um, thing that the Russians had in the late 70s, right? So the ML, it would be the latest in technology that the Russians had before the MLD. Since the MLA is already in the German tech tree and they probably don't want to do a copy paste on the MLA, uh, the ML would be just uh, another step in the middle between the M and the MLD. So the M would be 10.7, the ML with R23s and R60Ms and our flares and stuff would be 11.0. And then the MLD would be the most advanced one with R24s in the future, R60Ms, R60Ms, and in the far future, R73s as well. So, yeah, that would be a very, very cool addition because we would have more versions of the aircraft itself and an aircraft that a lot of people love. So, anyway, this is it, Kai. My five, uh, guys, my five uh, kind of ideas that uh, of versions of MiG-23s that can be added. So, the S and the L initially, one of them. The MS as a premium or event, um, the P as an event as well for the PVO, ML for the Tech 3 instead of the M on 11.0, the M then receiving, um, not getting the R60M in 10.7, and then as an event vehicle in the far future, the Dash 98 as well. So pretty good. Uh, I think um, it should be a very, very cool update if this is ad ever added. And yeah, let me know in the comments if you like this. And I see you guys in the next one. So bye, guys. See ya.